प्रेज द लॉर्ड एवरी वन आई एम रजनी कांता एक्का साइंस टीचर ऑफ क्लास फाइव इन माउंट ओलिवेट सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द एक्सप्लेनेशन फ्रॉम आवर कोर्स बुक न्यू साइंस पावर एंड द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इज प्लांट रिप्रोडक्शन चिल्ड्रेन लेट एस नो वॉट इज रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट Reproduction in plants is a process by which plants multiply to produce more of their own kind. In plants, reproduction takes place by seeds, from spores, and by vegetative propagation. first we will take reproduction by seed all flowering plants reproduce by forming seeds seeds are produced inside the fruit a fruit develops from a flower seeds of a plant differ from the seeds of other plants in their number shape size texture means feel or appearance of the seed and color as you see in the picture different types of fruits with different size shape and number of seeds in them in structure of a seed we see that all seeds have an external or outer covering called the seed coat it protects the seed from rubbing against a hard or rough surface there is a scar on one side of the seed this is where the seed was attached to the wall of fruit as you see in the picture on removing the seed coat we find two leafy structures they are called seed leaves or cotyledons when we split them open we find a baby plant called embryo the embryo is present between the cotyledons this embryo has two parts the baby root and the baby shoot seeds like bean rajma pea gram have two cotyledons they are called dicotyledonous or dicot seeds some seeds like rice wheat maize oat barley have single cotyledon or one cotyledon they are called monocotyledonous or monocot seeds germination of seed in this first we will know what is germination the growing of a new plant from a seed is called germination a seed needs the right amount of water air and warmth to germinate there are certain stages in germination the seed first absorbs water through its hole this softens the seed coat and so it ruptures or bursts a small root comes out from the seed which grows downwards it is called a radical a small shoot then comes out from the seed and grows upwards it is called plumule as you see in the picture the seed with a small root and a small shoot is called a seedling the growing seedling uses the food stored in the cotyledons for its growth after few days green leaves starts growing on the shoots these leaves make food by the process of photosynthesis the cotyledons dry up and fall off as all the foods in them is used up the seedling then develops into a new plant this is how the journey of a new plant begins seed dispersal or dispersal of seeds means 
the process of spreading seeds to different places is called seed dispersal now the question arises why do seeds need to be dispersed children see plants are fixed to the ground and cannot move from one place to another if all the seeds fall and germinate near the parent plant they will not get enough amount of air water and warmth for growth therefore it is necessary for them to grow away from the parent plant there are some natural agents that help scatter the seeds now the question comes how do seeds get dispersed seeds can be dispersed in number of ways they may be carried by wind water animal or scattered by explosion the first way of dispersal of seed is by wind in this seeds must be light and small in order to be carried by wind to greater distances the seeds of hipptage dandelion madar and cotton have tuft of hair or a bunch of hair sycamore seeds are winged they spin through the air like many helicopters another way of seed dispersal is by water plants which grow in water or near water bodies use water for the dispersal of their seeds the lotus fruit has a spongy structure and the coconut has a fibrous outer covering these special features make them light and help the seeds float on water and move long distances now we see how animals and humans help in dispersal of seeds what animals and humans do they eat fruits and throw away their seeds seeds of apples plums mangoes oranges cherries etc are disposed in this way some seeds such as cockleber burdock and tiger nail seeds have hooks they stick to the fur of animals or to the clothes of human and get disposed squirrels what do they do they collect nuts and bury them to be used in winter they often forget them when these seeds get suitable conditions they grow into new plants and in the same way birds eat fruits few seeds of fruits get stuck to their beaks when they rub their beaks on the bark of trees the seeds fall down later on these seeds grow into new plant <coughs> another way of dispersal of seed is by explosion or by explosive method in this some seeds like pea balsam lady's finger turmeric geranium and castor are enclosed in pods which burst open and explode when they get ripe and dry let us see another way of reproduction in plant from spores here in this some plants do not bear flowers they are called non flowering plants such as mushrooms and molds they do not produce flowers seeds are also not formed in them but they too need to reproduce they reproduce with the help of spores spores are small spherical and light structures which help them in reproduction since spores are tiny and very light they can be flown and dispersed easily in various direction to give rise to new plants now the third way of reproduction in plant is vegetative propagation what is vegetative propagation beside growing from seeds new plants also grow from roots stems and leaves of the plant this is called vegetative propagation plants like bougainvillea rose hibiscus and sugarcane grow from 
cutting off stems as you see in the picture rose plant growing from stem cutting onion ginger and potato are underground stems they also have store food in them these stems bear buds from which new plants can grow as you see in the picture new potato plants growing from eyes as in another picture you can see the roots of sweet potato can grow into new plants the leaves of bryophyllum and begonia give rise to new plants picture you can see leaves develop buds on their margin these buds further develop into plantlets and separate out from parent plants and grow into new plants now moving towards another topic that is crops crops are the plants of one kind which are grown in large numbers in fields by farmers for food or to obtain other useful product now growing crops in the field by farmer is called cultivation now different crops are grown in different season now there are two types of crops one is kharif crop and another one is rabi crop I'll give you some examples of kharif crop like rice maize jowar bajra peanuts jute soya bean and cotton now this kharif crops are grown during summer season that is from june to october now other side we can see in rabi crop some examples like wheat barley gram pea and mustard now they are grown in winter season that is from the month of november to april growing crops by farmer and that also healthy crops are important because they help in feeding the entire population of a country a good crop adds to the wealth of the nation therefore while growing crops farmers have to keep several things in their mind there are different stages for growing healthy crop first is plowing the field as you know that plants grow in soil therefore preparing the soil in the right manner is very important second is selection and sowing of seeds Sowing is the process of planting healthy seeds using healthy and ripe seeds that means good quality seeds are selected and sown in the soil by farmers third stage is addition of manure and fertilizers adding the right quality and quantity of manures and fertilizers to the soil it increases the crops production fertilizers like urea phosphate ammonia sulfate and nitrate can be added to soil but remember that overuse of chemical fertilizers is harmful to the soil as well as the crops whereas manure is obtained from the dead and decaying plant and animal waste which is very suitable in all the cases for the plants fourth stage is irrigation watering the plant is called irrigation farmers water their crops at the right time with the right amount of water fifth stage is protection as the crop grows it needs to be protected from herbivorous animals and it is done by creating a fence around the field weeds or wild grass must be removed regularly besides this pests like rats mice and insects also harm the crops therefore farmers use different pesticides to kill them sixth stage is harvesting cutting down of ripe crop is called harvesting seventh and the last stage is storage of grains after harvesting the crops grains need to be protected against moisture and pests 
such as fungi, rats, moles, birds, squirrels and insects. Therefore, they should be stored in godown or in airtight and sealed containers. Children, here the chapter 1 is completed. Thank you.